Antarctica, there's many rock-based or volcanic environments that have virtually no organic matter. The soils in Antarctica are very lean. There's very, very little organic material there. So uh, we wanted to go to extreme environments in Antarctica to explore whether the microbes there also are uh, eating a lot of, are also capable of eating organic matter. I mean, we have experiments down on the lakes in the dry valleys. We are going to these glaciers, we're going to the sea ice, and we're going up on Mount Erebus. And each one of those requires a different set of preparations. Training for those things is really important because, I mean, if you uh, foul up, your life is in danger. Yeah. In your trip so far, have there been any mishaps? Well, we had a series of storms that we got into. Uh, the, uh, where, uh, you know, we had such high winds that we couldn't be picked up, we couldn't be moved. So we were stuck there for a week over Thanksgiving and, uh, you know, basically uh, lived on crackers and, and, and hot water and, and in minus 60 degree temperatures and 40 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour winds and you were hoping that we, the tents wouldn't blow down. Surviving in, in, in snow is one thing. Uh, another thing is to operate snow machines. So a lot of transport is with snow machines. On the sea ice, it's very easy. It's basically, you know, you sit in a car and you go somewhere. But in the mountains, it's much harder because when you run on a slope, the snowmobile can, can turn over and you have to keep that from happening. And you also often hit ice patches and you have to be able to deal with ice. Another thing we're doing is we're climbing in these ice caves, which basically means you have to be at least somewhat of a mountaineer that can deal with ice and where you can repel into ice and climb out again with uh, uh, crimpons and ice picks and this kind of stuff. So, um, and all that you have to learn. And the learning itself is not enough really because you also have to have the muscles to, to climb up. So you have to actually train. Uh, so it's, it's not that somebody's going to lift you back out, you have to get out yourself. And we typically have mountaineers with us who keep us safe, but you still have to have a basic skill set that, that helps you survive. And then the other thing is diving. I mean, you know, when you dive in Antarctica, it's, you know, you have to be familiar with, uh, 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 with dry suits. And we have a really fantastic uh, diving program here. And, and, and Chris McDonald and I, we were practicing many, many dives before we before he let me go to Antarctica so um, and then then I finally was trained up to actually do the diving down there I was diving at some point and um, and the um, the dry suit has two zippers you know one inner zipper that keeps you sealed and an outer zipper that that keeps you know that, that protects that zipper from the outside and we were in a in a hut and there was a lot of stuff going on a lot of people and I was distracted and so by accident, when I pulled the second zipper up, I also pulled the lower zipper open. And so uh, I jumped in the water and I immediately knew that it was flooding. And so, you know, at that time we didn't have the ladder in the ice hole yet, but, um, you know, you, you swim and it's not a big deal. It's just that that's it for diving for that particular day. So, <laughs> and so but I mean, you know, it was basically a problem that's caused when you, you know, when you're not concentrated. You really don't check very well, um, but I mean, you have to be trained enough that if, if those kind of things happen, that you know what to do to get out, and so you don't kill yourself doing that. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.